I am Dr. M. Shujna Reddy from the Department of CTVS. Um, today we will be discussing on, top, on the topic coarctation of aorta. Coarctation derives its word from a Latin term coarctio, which actually means drawing, in drawing together. Uh, coarctation of aorta it actually it indicates an arrowing at some part, part along the course of aorta and uh, it is an area of narrowing of the thoracic aorta in the usually at the region of insertion of the ductus arterius. Um, uh, it can be associated with abnormalities of the aortic arc. If the coarctation with or without the patent ductus arteriosus but uh, without any other associated cardiac anomalies, it's termed as a primary, pure, or isolated coarctation. Coming to the history, Mogagni was the first one who had described uh, in autopsy specimens in Paris in 1760 uh, about coarctation. In 1903, Bonnet had classified uh, the coarctation into infantile and adult, adult groups which is uh, otherwise also uh, termed as pre-doctoral and post-doctoral coarctation of aorta. In 1944, the first repair uh, was done in a patient with coarctation and was performed by Crawford and Nylon. And in 1957, Washult, he used a prosthetic on leg grafts across the coarctation site. In 1966, the first subclavian patch aortoplasty was done by Walhausen and Narwald. Uh, coming to the classification, as I already mentioned in 1903, um, Bonnet had suggested dividing the patients of coarctation into two groups, infantile, which is a preductal, uh, which has a PDA which supplies the lower body and there was a tubular narrowing at the isthmus of the, uh, of the aorta and proximal to the ductus. And the adult, which is the postductal, where there is no PDA, but rather the shelf-like uh, narrowing within the lumen of the aorta. Now, uh, the, this classification is actually obsolete now. Uh, Emato and et al. has also proposed a classification into three groups with two subtypes. Uh, the primary coarctation, uh, coarctation with ischemic hypoplasia and coarctation with tubular hypoplasia. And the subtypes are with VST and other, the second subtype is with, the, with other major cardiac anomalies. Uh, coming to the surgical series for evaluating the outcome, the classification was divided again into three groups, which was the first one was an isolated coarctation. Group two was coarctation uh, associated with a VST and group three was coarctation with other complex cardiac, intracardiac anomalies. The classification system, another classification system which was proposed by the International Nomenclature and Database Conferences for Pediatric Cardiac uh, Surgery. It had a isolated coarctation as a first group, associated with VST as a second group, and with co an other complex cardiac anomalies as a third group. Prevalence and epidemiology, it constitutes around 7% of the congenital heart diseases and affects uh, one of every 1600 newborns. It's proposed that they, it is twice as common in males and quite frequently associated with other cardiac uh, congenital heart diseases, especially VST and left heart obstructive lesions. Etiology is usually unknown, but also uh, it has a multifactorial and it's considered as a multifactorial disease. Although uh, there has been family, familial inheritance which has been described, it is it can be associated with a chromosomal anomalies and other genetic syndromes like Turner's in 30 uh, thirty percent of the cases, as well as twenty two q eleven micro deletion syndromes or trisomies of twenty one and 20, eighteen. In coming to the embryology, uh, there has been two theories which have been proposed, which are the flow theory, wherein if there are any left sided obstructive lesions uh, attributed to the lower flow uh, across the arch and the isthmus, there is hypoplasia and coarctation while and the other uh, one is a ductal sling theory uh, wherein um, it is proposed that there is a shelf like lesion which uh, which causes the coarctation of aorta coming to the morphology the coarctation can vary in severity it has been uh, if it can be localized 
of with a 50 percent luminal reduction to cause a hemodynamic in, uh, significance. Our, um, our a tubular coarctation with less narrowing also can cause a hemodynamic significance. In nearly 33 percent of the cases, they have moderate uh, luminal narrowing, 42 percent have pinhole stenosis and 25 percent have luminal atresia. There is a shelf like projection or in uh, it is usually a shelf like projection or enfolding of the aortic media into the lumen and this shelf can be preductal or postductal but usually is periductal in uh, location. Externally there is a indentation or a wasting which is there. Um, as there is an associate intimal wheel which further na which is due to the intimal uh, cells hypertrophy along with the media uh, which further narrows down the lumen. Um, then there is a post stenotic di dilatation. This is usually thin wall because of the hemodynamics involved and the proximal walls are usually thicker due to the increased pressure. There are associated distal arc abnormalities. Uh, the most commonly associated with coarctation is the isthmus hypoplasia um, and a significant hypoplasia is termed as 40 percent reduction in the uh, luminal diameter. In um, the neonates and infants, distal arch also can be commonly uh, hyperplastic or narrowed um, and significant uh, is usually 50 percent of the luminal diameter and it is attributed to the patent ductus arteriosus um, as there is reduced flow to the uh, via the distal arch and most of the flow is through the to, through the PDA. Uh, the proximal wall abnormalities, uh, the, 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 the wall there is wall thickening and degenerative changes. It also it has also been proposed, uh, it has also been seen that they can involve the major arteries uh, supplied by the aorta proximal to the coarctation. Uh, coming to the collateral supply and the coarctation, they usually develop between the branches proximal and distal to the coarctation and as the life, as the age increases, uh, the size of the collaterals increase. It is usually uncommonly seen in uh, neonates and inf infants. Um, the inflow branches are from the branches of the subclavian artery. Um, and the outflow is into the uh, descending thoracic artery, usually the first two branches which are post coarctation and those are usually the third and fourth uh, intercostal arteries. We, there is a flow reversal which has been demonstrated from the outflow collaterals. The lower intercostals and the inferior epigastric arteries, um, they ha are uh, uh, less involved in the outflow collateral circulation. Aortic valve abnormality, uh, aortic valve um, abnormalities also can be associated in coarctation of aorta and which is most common is the bicuspid aortic valve which is commonly seen as, a, as an association. Um, second to which there can be ascending aorta dilatation and it is proposed uh, that and it, be, it has been found out that it is um, more uh, in association with coarctation. Um, as when compared to an isolated bicuspid aortic valve. Um, if uh, as the disease progresses, bicuspid aortic valve with persistent hypertension is secondary to the coarctation of aorta, there can be development of aortic regurgitation. Uh, coming to the left ventricular uh, uh, changes, uh, left ventricular hypertrophy is uh, usually seen in children and adults, older children and adults which is secondary to the hypertension. And uh, with uh, associated arc obstruction, there can be an abnormal uh, LVOT. Coronary circulation, young children, there are non arteriosclerotic changes which are seen with an intimal thickening and media proliferation. In older patients, uh, the, there can be changes which are again secondary to the hypertension. Coming to the atria, the valve of the foramen novale, which is uh, uh, which can be prolapsed and can lead to a left to right chanting at Usually once the coarctation is repaired, uh, it resolves, but uh, even uh, Austin secundum ASDs are a common occurrence uh, along with the coarctation. Moderate to large uh, ASDs uh, after repair usually can resolve, but in 10% of the patients, uh, these ASDs may not 
uh, close after the repair. There can be intractable um, heart failure, which avails, uh, which requires a AST closure. Hence, it has been said that the best predictor for development of heart failure uh, to predict heart failure when AST co coexists with coarctation is a small mitral valve diameter and not per se the size of the AST. There can be aneurysms as age increases, the, there is a chance of aortic dis dissection or mycotic aneurysms which have been documented. In um, Apart from that, the third and fourth intercostal arteries which are enlarged uh, due to the collateral circulation which has established. Uh, there can be thin wall saccular uh, aneurysms which can be present at the aortic origin. Apart from that, in coarctation, uh, associated with coarctation of aorta, there can be berry aneurysms which can cause sudden death uh, due to the rupture. The associated cardiac lesions, uh, it is been documented that 82% of the coarctation patients, 82% uh, uh, of the individuals have isolated coarctation of aorta while 11% are associated with VA, uh, ventricular septal defects and there are 7% which are associated with other cardiac anomalies. Um, usually it is more common, uh, high prevalence is seen in cases of left sided obstructive lesions and hence um, it is also seen as a common association of hyperplastic left heart syndrome and Schoen's complex. Um, the Coarctation of aorta can be of a common occurrence in DORVs, DTJs, uh, AV septal defects, and toxic being hearts, and and the other uh, anomalies which has been enlisted according to their uh, prevalence. Um, uh, there are um, the usually uh, in cases where there was pulmonary uh, diseases with pulmonary stenosis in tetralogy of fallow or pulmonary atresia, the occurrence with coarctation is of a lower prevalence. Uh, coming to the clinical features, um, in uh, neonates and infants, severe heart failure is seen usually they present within three months, but um, after a variable and they present after a variable period of well-being, they present with tachypnea, feeding abnormality, sweating, failure to thrive. And uh, or they can also present as early as uh, within a week with the closure of ductus. There is um, there, in such children uh, acute closure of ductus can cause hemodynamic collapse and there are signs of shock with skin mottling, weak pulses, reduced capillary filling time, metabolic acidosis and renal failure. And the persisting acidosis can further exacerbate the global myocardial depression. In age groups of uh, 1 to 14, they are usually asymptomatic, but they can present as with heart failure and those, sub, uh, those groups of children are usually uh, less than 3 years. Um, nine, but the 90 percent of these children can present with hypertension. Coming to adolescents and adults, they are usually asymptomatic. It can be just an uh, incidental finding which is due to the reduced femoral pulses or murmurs um, present with, uh, they can, uh, they usually present with hypertension. And beyond 30 years, they can also present with heart failure. Um, occasionally, they can present with headaches, nosebleeds, fatigue or calf claudication. And rarely um, end stage systemic hypertensive disease such as uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage and hypertensive retinopathy can also occur. Coming to the physical examination, in the, the neonates and infants, they can present with signs of hemodynamic collapse and heart failure. Uh, they have weak femoral pulses. Usually, uh, these children at birth can, uh, femoral pulses can be palpable, but after a week, during, when they present with severe hemodynamic collapse, there can be uh, weak or absent femoral pulses. Most of the children can also have central cyanosis or very rarely they can also have differential cyanosis when there is a preductal coarctation of aorta along with the PDA. 
or auscultation um, summation gallop is there systolic murmur can be heard at the left sternal uh, uh, parasternal margin there if at all there is an associated VST is a pan systolic murmur when there is a bicuspid aortic valve there can be an ejection systolic murmur or other additional um, the adolescent in adolescents and adults the, there is uh, diminished or delayed uh, femoral pulses as when compared to the pulse in either of the arms uh, usually uh, there is a document uh, there is a radio femoral delay which has been which will be noted all the four limbs bp uh, has to be measured there can also be a difference in bp in both the arms when there is an aberrant subclavian artery which is arising from the post uh, coarctation uh, post coarctation site the the bp difference in between the limbs is more than or nearly equal to 20 milli, uh, millimeters of mercury and there can be signs of left uh, ventricular hypertrophy like displaced uh, apical beat or there is a heave on as auscultation s uh, the heart sounds are normal additionally we can hear a s4 if the left ventricle is gradually becoming non compliant uh, the coarctation murmur which is a co continuous murmur in the left intraclavicular fossa radiating to the back uh, with the left scapula can be heard uh, which is because of the uh, additionally there can be continuous murmurs due to the larger the collateral arteries and other cardiac lesions coming to the natural history the survival the death in the babies with isolated coarctation of aorta 10 percent acute cardiac failure is seen during the first month if they are left untreated 20 percent die within the first year of life due to heart failure or its equally the most common cause of death here is again heart failure is the most common cause of death other can be aortic rupture um, uh, due to the uh, due to the aneurysm formation and rupture or due to infective endocarditis or very rarely also intracranial hemorrhages which are due to the berry aneurysms um, which are which are in association with coarctation of aorta heart failure in infancy the ductal closure actually progresses from the pulmonary to the aortic end during the first 7 to 10 days of life and it increases uh, the degree of aortic narrowing consequently severe coarctation um, develops which again precipitates a left ventricular failure between the age of one to two weeks and if this coarctation does not become severe then the heart failure won't occur secondly the degree to which the collateral circulation is present at birth collateral development is absent or inadequate as long as the ductus is widely patent and there is pulmonary hypertension thirdly the presence of major cardiac anomalies contributes to the heart failure in infancy heart failure in adults is secondary to the hypertension usually Coming to the diagnostic mod um, modalities, ECG changes in neonates and infants is a right ventricular uh, dominance with an extreme right axis deviation. Later, uh, there can be left ventricular hypertrophy and uh, there can be signs of left ventricular dominance and strain due to subendocardial ischemia. Adol in adolescents and adults, left ventricular uh, hypertrophy changes are there there uh, and gradually can have a left axis deviation coming to the chest uh, radiography in infants we usually see cardiomegaly and there are increased pulmonary vascular markings and in older children they can have cardiomegaly which is uh, which can be seen but due to uh, uh, left ventricular hypertrophy due to hypertension the two characteristic si uh, signs which are seen in older children is fig figure 3 sign which is seen in the left uh, sternal bo uh, left border of the mediastinum which is due to the uh, pre uh, the the proxim uh, the segment post aortic dilatation and the uh, segment proximal to the coarctation 
rib notching which is not usually seen until 4 to 5, or five years which is due to the enlarged collaterals. If it is present on the right side only then probably the left subclavian artery origin stenosis is present and if at all if it is present in the left side then probably it is an apparent uh, left subclavian uh, artery which is arising distal to the coarctation. Coming to the echocardiography it can, it can diagnose the diagnose uh, coarctation and also the severity of coarctation. Usually there is an aortic, uh, uh, the suprasternal notch view is seen to visualize the aortic narrowing which has also been seen in the image. Uh, the pulsed wave and continuous wave topplers uh, which usually depict the diastolic tail or the runoff um, or uh, and also the peak velocity and half time of the diastolic, ve diastolic ve velocity decay on spectral recording determines the severity of the coarctation. In isolated coarctation, the peak uh, instantaneous pressure drop across obstruction can be calculated from the peak velocity jet by using the simplified uh, the Bernoulli's equation. The other cardiac anomalies also can be viewed in echo. Uh, in, uh, in presence of severe coarctation, the severity associated uh, the left sided obstructive lesions and the severity can be uh, can be underestimated. In large PDA, the gradient across the coarctation is usually obviated and the pattern of flow is altered. And um, the coming to the MRA and CT angiography, they have a very high diagnostic uh, accuracy which of more than 95 percent because there is a large few field of view, you can visualize the entire iota, the ascending iota, the, the arch, the, uh, the descending iota, the collaterals and the valve. Compared to MRI, CT has a better spatial resolution and can be used in patients with metallic implants. And But it cannot provide the peak gradient assessment across the coarctation and degree of collateral circulation. The CT and MRI um, are indicated for usually serial follow-up imaging after surgical repair to assess the aortic dilatation or aneurysm formation. Um, coming to the cardiac catheterization, it is a gold standard for assessing the peak uh, gradient across the coarctation and usually is done when it is done in conjunction for a therapeutic intervention. Surgery for coarctation iota. iota uh, the general considerations of surgery for coarctation of aorta. After the induction, uh, anesthetic induction of the patient, the temperature is usually allowed to drift to 35 degrees. The blood pressure in the right arm is um, a radial, uh, measured by a radial uh, or a brachial arterial catheter, ephemeral catheter for distal pulses. NIRS can be used to monitor the tissue oxygenation both proximal and distal to the coarctation and the patient is usually positioned in a right lateral decubitus position um, with a sandbag tucked and a usual approach is a left postural lateral thoracotomy um, with entry to the fourth intercostal spit or bed of the fifth rib and um, in other, if at all there are any other associated cardiac anomalies or a hypoplastic arch median sternotomy has to uh, can be used. In older children and multi, uh, usually in multiple chest wall collateral should be usually ligated if visualized and uh, to prevent any hemorrhage. Abort's artery which arises from the posterior surface of the coarctation if at all has been uh, noted has to be ligated and the larger collateral intercostal arteries have to be taken care. Coming to the surgical techniques. These are the mild, uh, milestones um, in the surg uh, the surg the, the surgery is being done. Um, resection the first resection and end to end anastomosis by done by Crawford and Nile in nineteen forty four. Uh, followed by which Gross has um, Gross and colleagues have used the prosthetic patch I would, um, I would, uh, autoplasty and Washult in nineteen fifty seven. Um, showed as the prosthetic patch uh, augmentation and uh, the further in 1966 Waldhausen and Narwald have uh, done the subclavian flap iotoplasty and Amato and et al have finally showed as resection and the extended end to end anastomosis. Uh, this is uh, resection 
of the coarctation and creating a wide anastomosis proximally and distally and then end to end anastomosis which is usually done in the neonates and the infants. Um, the second procedure so described uh, is an um, end to side aortic uh, anastomosis usually done for associated hyperplasia of the isthmus and aortic arch. Uh, applicable to older children who have a fixed uh, um, descending iota and it is difficult to mobilize in order to provide a better tension free anastomosis and it has a less chance of recoarctation. End to side repair have also been documented to using median stenotomy to have favorable results with extended end to end technique. The, the uh, subclavian flap uh, iotoplasty and the sub, uh, reverse subclavian flap iotoplasty have been described wherein uh, the incision is the left subclavian artery is ligated and the incision is extended much proximally and the subclavian flap is um, brought down and sutured. Um, reverse subclavian flap iotoplasty is usually used in cases with hypoplasty, uh, the distal isthmus and distal arch hyperplasia. The further uh, described procedures are prosthetic patch iotoplasties wherein there is a linear incision which is made across the coarctation site and anterior augmentation with a prosthetic patch has been uh, is done. The other procedure described is interposition grafting wherein the coarctated segment is excised and a uh, uh, prosthetic graft and usually a dacron graft is placed and usually used in older children and adults. Um, one of the described procedures resection and extended end to end anastomosis. Uh, this they uh, in the involved the coarctated segment the PDA is ligated and the coarctated segment is excised and the incision is further uh, extended to the undersurface of the distal arch and the uh, the descending thoracic iota is directly anastomosed to the uh, undersurface of the distal arch making it a wide anastomosis and sometimes can also be augmented with uh, pericardial patches and has shown to have better results with lesser recoarctation rates. Coming to the post-operative complications, these are uh, the, the slide shows an enumerated uh, of the complications uh, post-coarctation repair. Uh, the immediate complications are hemorrhage which is usually seen immediately after the clamp is relieved from the suture sites or uh, um, if at all the bleeding is torrential has to be taken for re-exploration. Um, the one more complication which can be seen is damage to the phrenic nerve injury while dissection and the recurrent laryngeal nerve which uh, which can be seen uh, while dissecting vagus, uh, vagus and the re recurrent laryngeal nerve should be taken special care of and prevent and trying to preserve them. Um, the other complication which can be seen is the chylothorax which uh, if, if it is present even uh, it can be an immediate presentation or um, very rarely can present late at around post of day 5 or 7. Uh, usually we can go ahead with a conservative management for chylothorax but if it persists further beyond uh, 7 to 10 days might have to be taken for a re-surgical uh, uh, for a surgical intervention. Um, coming in specific to the complications, mortality usually earlier studies in neonates have shown around 2 to 10 percent but the recent studies have lit have shown 0 to 2 percent of mortality. In older children and adults, it is approximately uh, less than or equal to 1 percent. The risk factors which are involved are uh, which contribute to the mortality is actually a very poor pre-op status, heart failure, low birth weight and there are other cardiac associated cardiac lesions like HLHS. Um, coming to the one of the complications is paradoxical post-operative hypertension. Uh, this entire syndrome with paradoxical post-operative hypertension and abdominal uh, 
uh, discomfort is first reported by Siali in 1953. Uh, it has been noted that uh, there is a paradoxical increase in the BP post repair, which is, uh, and the proposed theories are the two hypertensive responses, which is first seen as early within the 24 hours and usually subside within 24 hours. It is usually because of the increase, uh, the sudden stretch which is released from the baroreceptors after the repair in the carotid arteries and aortic arch, and hence which is why there is a sudden increase in the sympathetic response and we see a in sudden paradoxical increase in the BP in the post-op period. And the second phase is usually, uh, this is more pronounced uh, uh, with the di in the diastole within uh, 48 to 20, 72 hours. After the first initial 24 hour response, one third of the patients experience the second phase, which is due to the elevated renin and angiotensin. And usually is stimulated by the first phase. Most of many of these patients who have, um, uh, have, have undergone a coarctation repair um, on post-op day 5 or 7 they usually have, my, uh, they have mild abdominal discomfort or distension and in very, uh, severe cases in 10 to 20 percent of the patients can also have very severe distension and discomfort. It is uh, being proposed as there is reduced flow uh, beyond co coarctation. The mesenteric bed is usually uh, uh, has uh, is used to a very lower mean arterial pressure. With coarctation repair, there, there is sudden increase in the arterial pressure in the mesenteric arteriole, and hence a sudden severe reactive acute inflammatory changes which happen, causing mesenteric arteriitis and subsequent ischemia. Um, in um, most of the cases as there mild discomfort and distension is seen with where patients present with ileus and abdominal pain. Um, they can be managed medically by keeping the patients on in, in, uh, nil by mouth and with a nasogastric tube insertion and gradually the symptoms settle. But in very severe cases with severe distension, with uh, uh, then they may land in laparotomy and explore, uh, exploration of the scene. Uh, the paraplegia, it is a, uh, the Brewer and colleagues have documented that 0.41 percent of the cases present with paraplegia. Uh, if at all there is a good collateral circle, circulation, the risk of paraplegia is less, but if the circulation is less, the risk of paraplegia is documented to be more. Uh, if at all uh, the situation, there are some situations which stimulate um, development of usual amount of collateral circulation uh, are the coarctation infants who don't have a good um, collateral uh, uh, circulation, coarctation proximal to the left subclavian artery or uh, with a patent ductus supplying the descending thoracic artery, uh, uh, descending thoracic aorta. Um, if at all there is a stenosis at the left origin of the left subclavian artery and absent uh, of good collateral system. Uh, coarctation of the right subclavian artery arising as a fourth branch or distal to the coarctation. And in cases of re-repair who don't who, do, who have a poor co collateral circulation are more subjected to have paraplegia. To avoid paraplegia, it has been proposed a iotic cross clamp time to be kept as short as possible and moderate hyp hypodermia around 34 to 35 degrees Celsius can be maintained. A good proximal pressure and a very uh, has to be maintained in order to prevent paraplegia, making sure that the distal mean pressures are around, for, uh, around 45 millimeters of mercury um, and there is no acidosis. Just in case on the test clamp, uh, the pressure drops to less than 45 millimeters of mercury, it's better to go with the left heart bypass. Uh, one of the complications post repair can be aneurysm formation. It is you. It can be a uh, late presentation. Uh, there can be uh, true aneurysms, which can be seen in prosthetic only patch repair, which is due to the uh, excess hemodynamic uh, pressure on the posterior and the lateral walls, uh, while anteriorly being augmented with the prosthetic patch. 
aneurysms after uh, the subclavian flap repair have also been documented. There can be uh, false aneurysms which are uh, which uh, which can be which can be present. Usually, um, if at all they present early, they are usually infected due and can be mycotic aneurysms, and also can be false uninfected aneurysm which are due to the suture line, uh, which is usually seen um, between a graft, um, which can be usually seen in femoral arteries also. Uh, dissection, uh, there can be dissection which can occur proximally and distal to the coarctation repair and leading to a late aneurysm formation. Uh, the left arm function after the subclavian flap aortoplasty, it is usually due to the left subclavian artery ligation, but there is an existent collateral circulation from the vertebral artery. Um, hence, um, the circulation is per se maintained. There is uh, during stress or increased activity, uh, there is reduced flow to the affected arm, but the claudication is uncommon and very rarely less than 1% of the patients, there are reported cases of doubt, gangrene also. Uh, it has been seen in several studies that there can be persisting upper body hypertension which is attributed to the proximal uh, uh, wall, uh, uh, proximal uh, arteries, wall uh, changes which have been uh, documented. It is more evident uh, in an uh, post exercise as when compared to, to at rest and uh, it gradually reduces over years. And also another is a late post operative exercise capacity which is usually normal uh, lower than normal 80% of the predicted value. Um, the one of the complications are resistant, uh, recurrent or persistent uh, coarctation. This, uh, this post-op condition, um, the, it is defined as a resting peak uh, pressure gradient more than equal to 20 millimeters of mercury across the repair area. Uh, the resting gradient is always not sensitive, hence exercise testing is required, usually a bicycle exercise testing is used for the same. Um, MRI or a digital subtraction angiographies for the diagnosis, it has been uh, the ratio of the aortic diameter at the repair site and at the diaphragm if at all it is less than 0 0.7. Um, so it, is, it is suggested as a criterion for more than mild aortic narrowing. Uh, and higher ratio elevated uh, blood pressures and vascular abnormalities. Uh, are also seen. The possible factors for recurrent coarctation are insufficient resection of the coarctation segment. Um, if the ends are not adequately mobilized, there is a tension at the suture site. Uh, if there is still associated residual hypoplastic segment of the aortic arch, if there is lack of growth of the suture line, there is a possibility of recurrent coarctation. If at all the flap has not been fashioned properly, um, the subclavian flap or a polyester only patch, we can see recurrent coarctations. Uh, if at all we there is a failure to resect uh, an obstructed uh, intimal ridge, uh, this can be seen. In uh, if at all in children, a uh, small tube graft is used or there is a kinking. Uh, uh, usually when done using bypass, there is a possibility coarctation can recur. And um, earlier silk sutures was used instead of a monofilament sutures which are currently being used. In, hence in older studies, the re-coarctation uh, re rates have been documented higher, but now in the recent studies which uh, wherein modern suture techniques and microvascular techniques are used, the coarctation rate is reduced. Coming to the prevalence uh, after each surgical procedure, uh, um, in end-to-end -end anastomosis, the rate of recoarctation has been documented high, it is nearly 20 percent. Coming to the subclavian flap uh, iotoplasty, originally uh, in recent uh, previous studies which they have documented, they said it is low, but then um, there are further studies conducted which uh, prove that the recoarctation rate are as high as 13 percent. 
usually in infants we don't use it's not advised to use patch aetoplasty um, with, because there is again a chance of high uric coarctation rate but when it is used in older children the rates of recoarctation are quite less um, resection with extended and end to end anastomosis have among all the procedures have the lowest recoarctation rate of around 6% management uh, balloon angioplasty is now considered as the initial procedure of choice uh, the initial um, the there is less complication incidence which has been documented and the success rate has been high if balloon dilatation is not successful then reoperation is the may be required and majority of these patients will have to be either managed using a patch graft angioplasty or resection with an interposition graft or an extra anatomical bypass if at all there are there is also an associated valvular disease or cabg um coarctation of abdominal aorta has been reported in 0.5 to 2% of all the coarctations uh, can be congenital or related to congenital rubella or takayasu's arthritis or one reckling hausen's disease in these two thirds the narrowing is sub uh, circumscribed and one third there is long diffuse hypoplasia the diagnosis is confirmed by angiography it is really important to establish the status of the renal arteries the proposed uh, surgical therapy is a patch aeroplasty and bypass grafts thank you